What is up, Swarm? Corey here with Honeyland. I've got huge announcements for you. Buckle up. This is a long one with tons of incredible information. So first off, how is your happiness doing today? Because mine is through the roof. You know, that's my goal. Happiness things, trying to provide happiness everywhere we go. Uh, let's start with the staking issues are fixed. We have a new game build. I've got tons of other announcements for you guys. So staking is fixed. We've had issues for the last two to three weeks. I know it's been uh, painstaking for all of us. Uh, we've had frozen and we can't get them in and out and yada yada. Everything has been fixed. So we've retroactively made sure that everything's been updated. Anything that was frozen is unfrozen. You should be able to move those freely. Anything that was supposed to be staked should be staked. Uh, and then anything that you need to do now in terms of staking or unstaking should be, done, be able to be done freely without error, without issue. We're back to our normal staking and unstaking speed. All of that stuff can be done in the game, in Hivemind. You're welcome. Thank you for your patience and putting up with this. Uh, we just needed to wait till the next build. There was a lot of kind of going on that needed to all come together at once. And the next build was the time to do that. So um, if you have any issues, let us know, but everything should be fixed. Second, we just launched a new build of the game. So um, today it's a forced update, which means um, you shouldn't be able to log into your uh, Google, I believe if you're like on an Android device, uh, I think that you'll need to go download the new APK. Uh, I believe it forces you to do that. So you'll go to honey.land, that's where you can do it. Just install the new package and then you'll be all good. You'll have our new update. If you're on iOS, when you go to open the app, it will tell you that you need to download the new app. It'll say, okay, doesn't take any extra time. You'll be in our new version. If you're on Saga, it's an automatic update. You're welcome, uh, pretty cool. So that's how you'll get the new version. Let me explain to you everything that you're going to experience in this new version. And I should start by saying, there are some incredible new features in this. Like the gameplay experience is significantly better today. I am far happier playing Honeyland today than I was yesterday. But this is also just really most of these things are just laying the groundwork for like way more features and utility in the future. I'll explain to you what I mean. So first off, friends, we now have the ability to add friends. So if you go to your hive, you'll see a friends button uh, on the kind of like the bottom middle of the screen. You can request or you can uh, request friends. You can go search them and find them and ask to be their friend. You can accept them. You can deny them if you're not a very good friend or you don't know who they are. Um, but you can start adding friends. Once you have friends, you can send them a daily gift and they can send you a daily gift back. So these daily gifts will be able to be combined and redeemed for spins ultimately. So real like in-game prizes just by having friends and sending them out. It's why we've limited the friends list the way that it is right now so that you can't just go set up a million friends, send a million gifts, get a million gifts in the return. Um, there's still some bugs with this. We are working a lot of this stuff out um, in terms of there's been some crashing, just kind of um, how we're accepting. We may build some more filters in, in terms of like who can request to be friends. So we will make this a lot better. Give us all your feedback that you have with friends right now and understand this is laying the groundwork for a lot more utility in the future. So we may be able to offer like discounts to anybody who's any who anybody who's a friend who is harvesting or hunting on your land that you can have like a non-friend rate and a friend rate. Uh, we'll have leaderboards just for friends. Um, we'll have messaging. We're going to call them honeygrams. So we'll be able to send messages and have conversations with your friends. So a lot of cool things and utility that we'll be building into friends in the future. Let us know what you would love to see for that friends feature. Uh, second, we have, um, and uh, you can send the Zubs, the, the gifts we're calling Zubs. So we've built in this new kind of soft currency called Zubs. Right now it can be redeemed for spins. We'll have other utility for it in the future as well. Um, second, if you go to create a mission now, go to universe, go to a land, go to start the mission. You're gonna see that as you start loading bees in those slots, if you're matching landforms or likes or dislikes or moods, that you're gonna start to see what the actual boost is that you're getting. This has made me like in just a short time, way smarter and realized how inefficient I was being with all of my missions. And uh, so I'm really excited about this on a personal level because I can start to be way more efficient with how I'm sending and, and uh, strategizing my missions. I think you guys will love this. Uh, give us your feedback on this as well. Also, if you use the filter in the uh, when you're selecting a mission to find just filter the right bees and sort the right bees, we've given an entirely new UX to that. It's beautiful, it's incredible. You're going to absolutely love it, I promise. Um, it saves your last search like or filter, however you've done it. So if you use a filter to say, give me all my Genesis bees, or let's say all my gen ones and twos that are this mood and this landform type. You create that filter, send a mission, you open up a new land, you click the filter button again, it will have those preloaded in so that you can either adjust them or keep them the same, put those filters on. So really, really cool filter system. We have new filters on the land as well. So the land search, if you're going there, instead of just filtering by landform type, you can now filter by also climate as well as zone. 
We are doing a lot more future upgrades to the land, the searchability, the discoverability, the ability to promote your lands. Um, we're gonna do a ton with the sonar buzz, give it tons more utility to give you the ability to like do advanced search filters. We'll change the UI and UX for the search. So a lot of uh, expect in future, in the next 30 days or so, that as great as we've made the like the mission selection, we will make the land selection process as well, but a couple small updates for you already. You'll also notice some small like UI um, um, updates. So like when you go to search land right now, you can actually in that list when you're scrolling through, you can see the commissions and the entry fees now, which you couldn't previously. If you go to your rewards, you'll be able to see your daily total that you've claimed for XP and VIP points. You couldn't do that and your weekly, uh, you couldn't do that previously. So some very small things that we're working on a little small bugs here and there, but please report them all in beta feedback so that we're aware of them. Um, even if you think somebody's already made them, uh, already kind of put them in there, give us all the feedback that you can on ways, uh, things that you'd love to see, things that you are loving, and things that maybe bugs or errors with any of the new features. Um, we've added, we've updated the leaderboard. So there's now badges on the leaderboard and there's also um, avatars and frames uh, for all of everybody who's on the leaderboard. So this is again, just laying the groundwork that now that we've started to add a, uh, achievement badges, um, we're gonna add a lot more in there. Right now we've got four achievement badges. So if you're a Saga user, you'll have a Saga achievement badge. If you're a Genesis holder, you will have a Genesis achievement badge. If you are a Genesis queen holder, you'll have a Genesis queen achievement badge. And if you are a, uh, if you have a Beamium account, you'll see that green Beamium uh, achievement badge. So so those are the four badges we have right now. This is going to get way, way, way cooler in the future. Um, I'll give you an example. We'll have levels to each of those badges. So like if you hold one Genesis B, you'll have most likely the color that you see now. If you have 100 Genesis Bs, you'll probably see like a diamond blinged out uh, accomplishment badge with a gold, uh, silver and bronze in between those two levels. So the more Genesis Bs you hold, the cooler your, uh, looking your badge becomes. We'll do that for a ton of things. We're gonna have a, no a number of like known achievements in the game. So X number of harvests, X number of hunts, X number of breeds, spend X amount of honey, etc., etc. And again, those will have multiple levels. So you'll have like the original level that we call like the honey level, all the way up to the diamond level for each of those. Spend a million HXD in the game to get the diamond level. I'll let you guys in on that uh, ahead of time. And you know, I think as little as like a hundred thousand to get the the um, uh, or, or probably even less than that, fifty thousand or something to get the uh, like the honey level, that very first level. So tons of accomplishment badges. These will be really really fun. It'll be a way to just kind of flex yourself in the game. Um, we'll also make it so that when you tap those accomplishment badges, you can see exactly what they are. Um, and again just laying the groundwork here. We're gonna do a ton of stuff with leaderboards um, in the future. We'll wanna make them sortable by friends, by XP level, a, a number of different ways that you can make leaderboards a lot more useful, fun, and specific to the way that you play the game. And again, friends, leaderboards, now we can marry those two. We can have a lot more fun with that type of stuff as well. Um, and then finally, if you're on the leaderboard and you click somebody's, or you're on your friend page, and you wanna to go to somebody's hive that you see, you'll notice that we've added a new feature to the hive search, which is that you can now view all the assets that somebody has in the hive. You can view their bees, their queens, and their lands. So if you wanna see kind of what people have and you wanted to kind of sort by, let's see what Von Delta's got in his hive, um, Cool, go find him on the leaderboard or become friends with him. And then you can go find him in the game. You can actually look at his hive, see what he's holding in there, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You won't be able to see like his strategies. You won't be able to see what he's doing with his bees or how he's organized his squads, but you can see at a high level kind of what he's got. And um, it could be a cool way that as we start to move, and I'll talk about this when we get to the hive mind stuff, we made a bunch of upgrades there, but the goal is that we'll have a, a really cool kind of compare offer escrow system to not only buy and sell NFTs, but also to trade NFTs amongst players. And so looking at the hive and this discoverability is gonna become, and the social aspect of it will become a huge part of what we're building. So all of this, again, some cool features, really just laying the groundwork. Hives will have multiple rooms in the future. So not only viewing assets, you'll be able to view trophies or badges or accomplishments. Um, we're gonna actually build exterior hives as well. So you'll have like an exterior and an interior to hive. So tons of cool stuff that we have planned. Again, all this just laying the groundwork. Um, we are also now available in eight countries in the iOS and Google Play Store. So our limited um, kind of listings in uh, India and Philippines and Turkey is an intentional strategic decision. It's not because we can't be everywhere in the world. It's that we want to strategically get into certain countries, collect feedback, start to onboard players, figure out what we're missing and where we need to get better, and then start to make that, polish that up before we start growing. So we'll slowly start introducing more and more countries. I think 90 days from now, we can pretty confidently say that will be in every major app store in every country around the world. South Korea is the one country and then any sanctioned countries are the countries that we'll be staying out of, but pretty much everywhere else around the world. So uh, in addition to Philippines, India, and Turkey, we are now as of today in the Google Play and iOS store for Italy, uh, Ukraine, Brazil, Indonesia, and Thailand as well. If you're in any of those countries, 
Go download us in the App Store, leave us an incredible review. You can now unlock the in-app purchase because you're downloading it natively through the App Store. So if you wanna go purchase HXD or purchase Beamium through that, you can do that now. So really, really cool. And again, we will continue to launch more and more countries strategically as we make things better. I will tell you what you're gonna see, just kind of our roadmap, our vision, is that our entire focus over the next two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, however long it takes us to get this perfect, is that we need to, when we get people coming into the game and registering, we're getting a couple hundred registrations a day with the small user acquisition that we're doing right now. The goal is that we turn that we get registrations to spend more time in the app on day one, to come back more frequently on day two, and to have more of those people staying around after day seven. Once we get to day seven users, moving day seven to day 30, which are two kind of big metrics in, uh, in gaming in terms of KPIs that you track, Moving from day seven to day 30 is really, really efficient on our end and getting day 30 users to spend and, and, and um, interact with the ecosystem in significant and meaningful ways is better than we had anticipated. So we have a lot of incredibly strong points with our KPIs, but that day one engagement, the returning for day two and what I'll call the stick rate into day seven is lower than we need it to be right now. So almost everything that we are doing development wise is going to be aimed at fixing that and making that onboarding experience simpler, more fun. Um, I, I talk about time to fun, right? Make it easy to understand. Um, I think um, just kind of logistically, the onboarding process is relatively easy. Sign in with a Google account, you're almost immediately playing, but there's a number of things that we've found that the game just isn't active enough. There's not enough that you can do. We don't explain some things very well. And so we are working on handling all of those issues um, immediately before we start building like a lot of these, um, you know, wish list features that, that are gonna be necessary in the future. And so um, that's where all of our attention is. Fortunately, things like friends and leaderboards will have um, Bumble Bash will be in the game mall as a playable game with trackable scores, a daily tournament with real prizes, a play for fun and a play for rewards mode. All of that will be in our next build. And then we have Pollen Pop and Word Puzzle, two other games that will be in the game mall, one being a word game and one being a match three game that we already, I'm playing right now on my uh, in test flight in iOS. They are incredibly fun and addictive. And we're building again, play for fun, play for rewards and daily leaderboards with all of those games as well. We'll have this entire kind of game mall arcade ecosystem that we'll be building over the next probably two months before we really get all of those in line. We'll have Bumble Bash uh, coming into the next build as well. But all the features that we're building are really geared at more engagement on day one, um, and then more uh, a higher stick rate between day two and day seven as well. And so just understand a lot of those will have benefits for you, like the leaderboards, like the games, like the things that we can do, um, exploring the hives and all that stuff. But a lot of those are really specifically geared towards our brand new players. Um, the hive mind, if you have not been in there in a while, go check it out. You'll be blown away. Obviously, you know, we've had for a while kind of this like list view where you can sort and search and get a lot better analytics to help organize squads and all that type of stuff. A couple things I wanna make you aware of. So number one, when you go visit an individual B page, you'll now see an activities tag tab where you can, in the middle of the page, you'll be able to see where they bred or hatched and if so, when and by who, um, whenever they've upgraded, any breeding that they've done. Um, so you'll be able to track all that stuff. And um, so that's a cool kind of useful feature. We'll make that even more beautiful and interactive in the future, but wanted to get that uh, kind of set so you can start to track the activity. We have a compare feature that we've actually had live for, uh, I think a couple weeks now, but I haven't really made anybody known or aware of this, but below the picture of a, below the PFP, like if you're looking at an individual B page, um, you'll see a button just below that image that says compare. Click that and it'll take you to a new page where you can start adding multiple Bs and comparing them on one list so that you don't have to see like all the bees. If you just want to compare two specific bees, maybe for a trade or something like that, uh, you can, or, or trying to organize like your hive mind, you can use that compare to find specific bees and slot them in. A really, really cool feature. You can even take that link if you're like comparing two bees and want to uh, offer somebody a trade, put your bee in there, put their bee in there, take that hive mind link and send it directly to them. They can click it and see, open up directly to that, um, that compared set of bees. We're going to continue to make that feature better so that we can actually have like a player A and a player B where you can have like a group of your Bs, a group of their Bs, it'll total the tallies for all the, um, the anything that's like a numerical score so that if, when we're trying to organize trades, um, it'll be much, much easier to kind of see all that stuff in one place. Um, eventually, we'll work on an escrow system, we'll work on an offer system, we'll work on the ability to not only buy and sell Bs inside the hive mind and inside the game, but to actually make offers and actually trade as well for non-listed Bs and things like that. So we've got a huge roadmap and vision for the ways that we can make that 
um, kind of OTC and marketplace and all that stuff, way more useful and way more fun. Um, stay tuned, it's not like a next month thing. There's a lot of work that will go into that, but we are being very thoughtful and mindful. If you haven't started to get into the OTC channels, uh, get in there. They are so much fun to start looking for what people have and what they're offering and what they're trying to do. Um, and, and you're start, gonna start to see with the mission boost, now that you can like see how much the boosts are with each um, with each individual thing, like how important some of those likes and dislikes and mood matching to queens and other bees can be for those mission boosts. And really trying to organize your colony, not just on based on what you have, but trying to trade for somebody may need a frustrated bee and you need anxious bees. Um, that trade can, can help both of you guys out. Um, and so it's a really cool thing. I would say get involved in the OTC channels. Um, it's pretty cool. Let's see other things. Uh, we've added friends in there. So you'll notice there's a tab at the top that's a drop down that says colony that'll have both friends and um, your squads in there. So as we add more features, we'll build uh, those into the menu. You can now see leaderboards. So uh, you can see all the leaderboards that are in the game. You'll be able to see them in the hive mind. Again, we will build these out way more um, into the future. Uh, let's see, we've got, uh, we've changed USDT to USDC in that main header. So we had like HXD to USDT can like uh, conversion. We've changed that to USDC. I don't know why it was USDT to begin with. Um, we've added your total points, um, which is like a score of all those eight traits that you have. You have like a total point score. We've added that to the um, export as well. So if you export um, a search of any bees, you'll see that as a new column. We're also gonna reorganize the way that that export um, happens. It's kind of weird and odd and inconvenient. How to have like some stats and then moods and likes and then more stats and then total stats is at the end. We'll get better at that, but just understand all the information you need is on that export. We'll organize it in a more, in a better fashion soon. So really cool hive mind stuff that we've done. So new game, uh, staking is working. Uh, we're in five new countries. Uh, the hive mind has gotten significantly better and we are just laying the groundwork for a ton of future stuff. All right, some other announcements. Number one, people have been asking about referral rewards program or a bonus or incentive or anything like that. We are working on this and we expect to have something in place by July, but if you've already referred friends to the game or you wanna refer them right now and you're like, I'm just waiting until you get the, you know, I wanna make sure I get credit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a window once we open up that referral rewards program and we notify you of it, we'll open up a window to where anybody who've already referred to the game can basically give us your referral code and we'll retroactively add them to your, um, to basically as, uh, as an attribution to your referral. So. Don't wait, go get your friends in the game right now and just know that once you bring them in, that you'll have a referral code eventually that you can say, hey, make sure that you go give me credit for bringing you into the game once that becomes a thing. Um, the Beamium Saga, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we've announced a while ago that we wanna give away a one of our limited edition Honeyland Saga phones, one of these ones with this super cool like, um, our laser edge B logo in the back. The phone's beautiful. We wanna give another one away. Um, to anybody who upgrades to BMM, we wanna raffle one off, not everyone. To one person who upgrades to BMM, we will most likely have this uh, end at the end of July. So we've got about five to six more weeks to for anybody who upgrades to BMM, and then we will close that window. I will make a formal announcement about this at some point, but I just wanna give you guys kind of a heads up. If you're upgrading to BMM, we have not forgot about that raffle, we still intend to do it. One of the reasons we wanna do it at the end of July is because right now we have some players who have like, uh, you know, a dozen BMM accounts or five or eight BMM accounts. We just, uh, about a week and a half ago, released some multi-account rules. We are gonna be modifying that again. I wanna make sure that we get it right. This will be the final announcement. We will have strict enforcement, but I will just clue you in that our goal is that we will have everybody playing on a single account. It's just the easiest way to monitor this for us that we don't have, say, you know, you get three BMMs and one free to play, but then this many in the household. And that, that if we just say every person is allowed to have one account, whether it's free to play or BMM, that's the account you play with. That's the easiest for us to monitor and enforce, and it's the fairest for the entire ecosystem. I know that that will not make everybody happy, um, but it's a it's a difficult decision. I've had a I've spent way more time and energy on this than I ever would have wanted to, and a lot of this is my own fault for not making guidelines much more clear, much more early. Um, so this is um, this is my fault. I'll take all that credit, um, but I need to get this right for the protection of the game and the future players and the future ecosystem, we need to get it right. The reason we're not announcing anything just yet is because we also wanna make it fair. And so how can we take you know people who have had multiple accounts, how can we make sure that they don't just, they're not out 10 BMM accounts, $300, they have to, they're forced to get into one account. They have done all this, you know, trading and like, how do we make all that fair? And so we're trying to work out some really, really clear and fair guidelines before we make any formal announcements. Uh, but there's some things that we will do to make that transition easier, but just understand by the end of July, that'll
that'll be the grace period essentially. We will expect everybody to be playing on a single account. So start moving that direction. I will have more guidelines and um, kind of uh, uh, benefits or incentives for that transition or what that process is gonna look like for people who already are playing on multiple accounts. I will have more guidelines for you in the future um, and, and we'll announce that formally, but just understand that one account by the end of July is ultimately what we are going to be enforcing and we will have a strict enforcement policy. One day ban, seven day ban, lifetime ban. We're not gonna mess around with this stuff. Um, we, If we're asking everybody to do this right now, we will, the only way that we can enforce this strictly in the future as well is if we enforce it strictly once we move past that grace period. So just understand that's where we're headed. Um, and I'll have more information on that. So. Guys, that's all I got for you guys today. I know a ton of information. What an incredible day this is. Uh, so much happiness being, uh, I, I could just see it in the, the chats, the discords, a ton of stuff going on. And then we will have before the end of the week, a formal announcement on the land mint as well. Stay tuned. I think you guys know most of the details. There's one kind of uh, cool new mechanic that we're gonna be putting in. It's You're actually gonna be minting a land mint ticket, not a um, unrevealed land. I'll explain what that means in a separate video, a separate announcement. And we should be up on Magic Eden before the end of the week. We will have a coordinated announcement at that point. And uh, so stay tuned on that. And uh, that's all I got for you guys. I love you. Zub, zub.